And one of the conversations I would love to start is to say, what does an African scent mean to you? Mean to when you, you mean. think Africa, what is the smell? Mm. So for me, it's like the smell of the summer rain. And everywhere in Africa ah. you go, you know that rain, just that smell yes. of just the rain falling on the ground. Mm. When you go to other countries, I haven't traveled a lot, mm. but some European countries, it rains, but that's, that no that smell. unique African smell not is not there. there, you know? Yeah. Or somebody said the smell of Amarula. You know, Amarula, we've got it in the cream de curl. Yes. Now you've got it in the chocolate. Yes. Other, but you have it as part of a smell. A sm Why not? You know what I mean? Mm. And as I said even before, for people that believe in, you know, ancestral worship, mm. when you're going to, whether it's going to consult a sangoma, the first thing they do is they light in. In Be In Beepo. Yeah. Because Spirit, spirituality cannot just come. It has to be ushered in by a scent, mm. changing the atmosphere. The, the, okay. See what I'm saying? I, As I say, seasons are governed by scent. By scent. So what I would say is, you know, you're lovey-dovey, you're having a great time, mm. you found the woman, you found the man, you know, whether you guys want to have a wedding or whatever, I would say, come, we talk, we curate a scent for you. Mm. Like, oh, lovey, I love it, I love it. Because what we want to do is we want to take that love yeah. and we want to curate it into, into a candle, ah. into something. Because we know Four years later. Yeah. Oh, not even four years. Not even four years. Later, four years. Do you need a reminder? Like, this is not the woman for me. She's like, ah, oh, this is not the guy for me. I'm done. And you know what? At mm. that time, yeah. whoever is much more um, mature, yes. I would say, bring out that candle that you had at that time. Remind yourself of that day. Because since also now, so I was in Durban. I was doing a launch in Durban. I come back at a break in. The, so oh, I lived no. there in a, yeah, in a freestanding house as well. Oh, yeah. Broke into my bedroom, stole the TV and oh, everything. No. First night, I couldn't sleep there. Then I had to, you know, clean and everything. I'm panicky. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to allow this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I took out one of the diffusers. Cha -cha -cha. Cha -cha -cha. That night ah, captured back my the environment. environment was bad. It was bad. So I might not be able to do something about the stuff that was taken, but I will not allow that to influence the my atmosphere and my environment. So we came up with our own scent, which is very, very great. As I said, we got Don't, this... don't skip past that <laughs> okay. part. That's a very important part. Coming out with yeah. your own scent based yeah. on what? And maybe uh, as you speak, break down the... Those that know scents knows, know that there's an opening, yeah. there's a middle, and then there's yes, a base. The underwood, yes. How do you choose... Well, I want my base to be this. and Is it just a preference thing? Okay. So you are the corporate strategist. Yes. For the Ventures Collection. Yes. What does that involve? So I didn't want to say CEO founder. <laughs> I was looking to be funky. <laughs> I think that's what we're looking to be. We're looking to be. We want it to be a bit different. Know. Yeah, 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 you okay. need it. It's nine to nine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to 9 to Life, your career and life journey podcast where we interview the interesting people doing the things you would like to do, but also the things that you never thought that you could. My name is Lesejo Moela, I'll be your host. And the reason why I emphasize that last part is I feel like today we are really, really delivering on that things you didn't know that you could. Because today we've got a perfumier, a perfumer. If you'd like, Miss uh, Belinda Mzuli. Yes. Welcome to Night to Life. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jessica. <laughs> you Thank are a perfume, a perfumer. Perfumer. You have a perfume brand. Perfumer. Ventus. <laughs> yes. Ventus is your brand. The Ventus. Ah, no, I'm making a huge mistake. It's mm -hmm. not a perfume brand. Mm -hmm. It's a luxury fragrance collection. There brand. we go. <laughs> How I can't unplay it like that. <laughs> Not Welcome good. to Nine to Life. Thank you so much yeah. Thanks for having me. Sure. Um, what yeah. possesses a person to be a <laughs> Well, usually we start with an origin story, getting to know the person. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm just so compelled to know about this perfuming thing. Yeah. We'll touch on it slightly, go back, and then come back to it. Mm -hmm. What possessed you to start perfum perfuming? Uh, I, I don't know. I think, first of all, spiritual. I mean, I'm a spiritual person. Yes. But also, I think just the love of fragrances, the love mm. of scents. Um, you know, I used to be in a very corporate environment that you travel quite a lot. And whenever you go to, especially the Middle Eastern countries, very, the first thing you enter anywhere, the smell. 
And I didn't understand it then. Very, very big on cleanliness. Yes. And very, very big on scents. You might find that a man and a woman have got four or five different perfumes a day and they change them all the time. And I didn't understand, like, what is the big deal? Wow. Until I started to understand that actually scents, they actually, um, in, um, to say effect an atmosphere or mm. change an atmosphere, they change moods, mm. they change outcomes. Mm. You know outcomes I mean? even. They change outcomes. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay. That is why, like, when you're out in the wild, mm. the first thing they tell you is, like, when you see a wild animal, you can smell fear. Mm. You know what I mean? And they tell you, you know, you need to look at it straight in the eye because it can smell fear. So the more courageous you are, mm. the more that animal won't attack you. So if there's a smell of fear, there's a smell of courage. Uh, but in this world that we live in, what changes that? That makes so much sense. If there is a scent of, of fear, yes. there should be another scent for courage. courage. Exactly. You see what I mean? So that, that's why I started to delve more into it. And then okay. what changes that, yeah. right? Mm. So what's the difference between fear and courage? Mm -hmm. In the world that we live in, it has to be a scent. Because when you spray it or when it comes in through a diffuser or through a perfume, yeah. as you enter in, if there's negativity... You bring in that positivity. Ah. See what I mean? So, so when, you change the smell of the room. Exactly. And therefore changing the, the outcome. In the room. In the room. Okay. Wait. Yeah. So yeah. So usually we, we start, like I said, we start the show off with a origin story. Just trying to understand this mm -hmm. animal that is Belinda, where it comes from, mm -hmm. um, your upbringing and how that shapes the person that you turned out to be today. Mm -hmm. So take us back to your growing up days. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Grade one, one of those. Okay. How was that like for you? Where were you? <laughs> okay. Who well, was around? Grew up in Alex, both parents. And Vo Alex, yeah, this one here. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. But my parents originally from KZN. Okay. So my, my mom, very, very strict, you know, rural upbringing. That's my uh -huh. mother. Ran the home. Yes. My dad was more relaxed. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in a very, um, what, what is the right word when you say, my mom was one of those boys do this, girls do this. Boys will go to boys. Traditional? Schools. Traditional, yeah. yes. Traditional maybe might be. Yeah, good. traditional. Yeah. Until, mm. you know, and I think around about mid-90s when I was like a preteen. Yeah. And because I had I had elder brothers, I'm the first girl in the family. Okay. And my brothers were like. So you're the youngest? No, no, I'm the, the first girl. I'm the oh, first girl. Oh, okay. And for a big family, there's like six of us. That's Three nice. boys, three girls. Ah, yeah. that's nice. One day, one day when I grow up, I'm going to have six kids. <laughs> I don't know if we oh, have six kids. I don't know if it's nice. You know, one of the it's things not... I say with my daughter, I always say to her, she's an she's an me me person. Oh, and I yeah. and I find it like it's so. I, I still say to you, you're so vain, but she's like, that's what I know. Yeah. So when I grew up, I never so had that. You have one kid. Me. Yeah, two. Two kids. Two kids. Okay, yeah, okay. but I've got one daughter. One daughter. Yeah. Oh, so it's, she's like the star of the show. That's right? what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how it's like that's to be the star. The you know? Okay. Because oh, you're not even the youngest. You're not the oldest. You're in the yeah, middle. In the middle, but I'm the first girl. Okay. So I'm like become deputy parent. You know. You know what I mean? <laughs> and maybe you don't know how that's like. I do because I'm not a girl. <laughs> what are you? Last one. I'm the last one. Ah. Well, there's only two of us, so. I'm the last in the middle. The so, so you need to have the six kids. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. I need to. <laughs> you when need I to grow up, you want to become a full-blown adult. You need to have the six, six kids. kids. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> it just, it looks nice from the outside. I don't know what yeah. it's actually like, right? Because I've never grown up in, in a big family. Mm -hmm. But from the outside, it looks like, woo. I, I think now so when I'm fun. older, yeah, when I'm you, older, you appreciate, yes, I appreciate siblings, because man. that's the one your brother, your sister, that's the one person who's got you. Absolutely, you know what I mean? They've got you, and I've seen it. But growing up is difficult. You share everything, ah. and remember, it's there's lots of us. One income, if you know the person is to give up anything else, to be me. Yeah. Oh. So when I say I've never had my own bedroom, I tell my daughter, I never had even had my own bedroom. So it just looks at me like. It's so what are, what are you doing in mine? <laughs> what am I doing in my own? <laughs> so, so there's that dynamic that yes. I'm like, sometimes like, if they don't know, I'm not vain. It's what I know. You know yes. what I mean? Like what you're saying is what yeah. you know. So yeah. I was, I was having a chat with a previous guest about this to say, mm. we as parents try to provide the best life we can for our kids. Mm -mm. But it ends up becoming such a standard for them that they I'm don't even you. see the effort. It's like, yeah, a, yeah. of course you're supposed to do that, ma'am. It's true, <laughs> you know, well, the iPhone era. Hey, it's like all my friends have got the latest. Like, what's so, wrong with me having yeah, the latest? I need the iPhone. You know what I mean? So, 14 Pro Max. You know what I mean? <laughs> and to, to them, it's, it's the most basic mm, thing. Even mm. the Uber. Even you know the what I mean? Uber. When they catch a text, it's like, what if I get kidnapped? I'm like, out of 14 people, it's you that they'll kidnap. 
<laughs> but they're just used to that. Nah. And maybe it's, it's just us. how we brought them up. Yes, it's a different era. Mm, it's a different era. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you are in a, a household, there's six of you. Six of us. Where did you go to school? Uh, so but I went to school in KZN, in Stenga. Oh, okay. So my parents are originally from there. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I went to a school called Girls College. In uh, it's in Durban, and then okay. I moved. In, mm, at the time, <laughs> <laughs> then I moved to then I moved to Joburg. Then I went to PC training. Actually, what happened is, as I said, around about pre-teens in the nineties, um, out came this perfume. It was called the Tommy Hill Figure ah. perfume. It was for teens. Yes, and I think that was my the one first, with the clear bottle. Yeah, it's only the clear bottle. I see. But because I had older brothers, and they were like the funky guys. And they wanted that perfume so badly. Oh, okay. It was, there was something about it. But, um, <coughs> excuse me, when I used to see the advert, mm. I, I saw a different kind of team then. And remember, I'm coming from a very traditional household. Mm, from, Times from are standard. starting to be yes. different. And this, every time I saw this advert, it was, you know, black and white kids. And then there's, you know, girls and boys, they all do the same thing. They all play pool. They all mm. play basketball. Mm. This is an American brand. Mm-hmm. And... My mom would be like, no, girls and boys can't, can't be together because this can't happen. This can't happen because yes. I want babies in the South. That was always the thing. <laughs> Come be pregnant, you're out of the house. My mother was like that. So there was this era now. You remember, yeah. it was like the 90s. I don't it was know. It like if a born. transition. Were you born in the 90s? <laughs> I was born in the 90s. I was born in the 90s. Yeah, I was born in the 90s. Yeah, but late 90s was this transition in the country. There's a new culture, American. African American culture, yes. the sitcoms, and because remember, I've got older brothers. I look up to them. So, so they're, they're the ones that are bringing this. Yeah, culture yeah, yeah. Now, now they're now bringing this new, beautiful, new life down. Yes. And then eventually, when I studied IT, and I was the first, well, the only girl at the class that studied IT, and in your class, you were the only yes, female. Female, yes, at the time. That's interesting. Yeah, and and we and didn't how was that? IT. Well, I think the times I wonder. Were you getting because I imagine they they were like. Uh, they were giving you like a lot of attention because like, you know, the girl. Yes, there yeah. was that. Yes. And I think because of the, back, back again, I think that advert and shaping of the culture. Yes. Now there was that, oh, you know, I can be with guys and chill like ah, with you. You can have guy friends. I can have guy friends. Where I was growing up, my, there was nothing like that. My mother didn't know it. You see what I mean? Yeah. So there's this new trend. Yeah. And I always say, you know, uh, if it was not for Tommy Hilfiger Perfume, I don't think I would have studied IT. IT. So that's when I talk about sense. They actually influence. The power of sense. Ne? Even, even a culture. Because they were even breaking stereotypes for you. Now. Exactly. You see, because it was through a sense that I saw a different. Yeah. And this is maybe when I'm 14, 15. So by the time mm. I'm 19, yeah. I'm studying and I feel so comfortable being around guys although my background does not necessarily create Allah, that yeah so my mother now had to also you know kind of like move with the times and whatever but that particular scent for me always speaks to a change of an era yeah you know what i mean yes, yes, so yes. scents are not just smell just a smell it has a lot more well look at today i mean if you see this big brand perfumes what kind of lifestyle do they depict Woo! so if somebody says i'm, sp- I'm spraying this or well, they've got a particular, you know what I mean, drink. It depicts a, a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. you see is soft life. You, you buy, you see. Yes. So so it's not just perfume that you're yes. putting on. I see. It's a whole identity as well. Beautiful. Yeah. So you studied IT. I studied what IT. What did you want to do when you were in high school? Do you remember? I wanted to be a DJ. A DJ? Yes. So you always wanted to break stereotypes. I don't even know thing. what it yeah? was. It was a like <laughs> Just a liker. <laughs> I think also because of my background, because my mom yes. was very strict. So you, when you come from a strict household, you kind of always want to be out there. Yeah, you yes, want to break out. Of break out. Yeah. Mm. My dad was one of those chill, supportive. My mom was very strict. And as I said, very traditional. So she only could teach me what she knew. I see. And this thing of girls DJing, are you going to make I money? Go, you know what I mean? Yes. Exactly. So it was I just wanted to be a DJ. That's beautiful. Yeah. You can still be a DJ. Uh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, true, true. That's true. So you yeah. said you went to a, a name I haven't seen or heard of in a while. Mm. PC training. PC training. And it used to be that you'd see it everywhere. Back then, yeah, in Bramfontein. What is it called now? Is it? I, I don't know. <laughs> Did not change the name. I to... don't know if it became Rosebank College. Rose... Did it? Mm-mm. Was it Did Rosebank it? College or Rosebank College was on its own, right? There's this one, man. What? What field? Something field. Oh. 
It's not okay. Oh, no. Anyway, I think. Mm. <laughs> so you were at PC training. Yes. You did your your, your IT Yeah, I did there. microcomputer technology. Um, for about two the two years, and at the time it wasn't this kind of IT. It was very much kind of technical. You have to remove the CPU. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember some of the stuff, <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't this nice stuff. It wasn't so like to assess. Am I giving away my age? Let's say. <laughs> no, it, it's experience. No, no, no. We I'm say it's experience. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's what's the word that they like to use? Um, seasoned. Know. You're a seasoned professional. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> okay, so you did that. And yeah. then where do you, where, where's your first job? Where do you so my first, I couldn't get a job in IT. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of Back course. Then, very, very melt of course. Of as well. Yes. You know, then my first job, I remember it was, at, it was a company that was called NPC Holdings. Okay. And I think at the time it was in Santon. Mm-hmm. And it was a f- kind of like one of the first black owned pension fund. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, okay. So it was NPC Holdings. I did an internship there. Mm-hmm. Eventually got a job. Nice. Then I moved into banking. I was at Barclays for a while. Oh. Then I was at Southern Sun. And then the eventually, group, yes, yes, the hotel group. Eventually, you were like. Mm, then eventually, I got into Microsoft. So that's oh, when I had oh, my yeah. final. I mean, I final. Yeah, but I was <laughs> that I studied now. I can use it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But by the time, obviously, things have changed. Mm. And what I was doing there wasn't necessarily the microcomputer technology yes. per se. It was more about you know uh, dealing with government. Yes. Sort of upgrading their software. So if oh, you're dealing yeah. with. Ho- Home affairs, yes. you know what I mean? The systems, the yes. support, policies, yes. trade. So very much um, quite different. But of yes. course, the times have changed as but well. IT, I think there's two things. It highlights, first of all, how broad IT is. Yes. We talk about this all the time in the podcast to say, um, IT, when, when we were thinking about IT, I remember back to my days in high school. IT to me was that, fixing yes. computers. Yes. You open the thing, you change the RAM, exactly. put it back, you are exactly. IT person. Exactly. You know? But now it's so much. Um, even for instance, something like a business analyst uh-huh. falls under the ambit of IT, but a business analyst does everything. everything true, right? Uh-huh. That's the first thing. Second thing, it's it's a running theme on the podcast. Uh-huh. This thing of I studied marketing, and I uh-huh. thought my career was gonna be this. marketing intern, uh, marketing specialist, marketing manager. Yes, market. they thought it was gonna be linear, but. I think almost 80%, 90% of our guests mm. start here, then they move here, then mm. they move here, then mm. they move here, and eventually they find their stride. Mm-hmm. Talk about how that was for you and how difficult or easy was it mm. for you to move. Because now you said you were in banking, mm-hmm. you were also in, um, in the hotel hospitality. Hotel hospitality. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. So I, th- I think the, um, so let's say maybe the, the nice part about me, I, I get I get bored easy. Okay. I'm a Sagittarius. That's my staff sign. So oh, okay. we're one of those that are very... So Utilians are very hyper. I see. Very hyper. You don't uh, want to sit still. No. <laughs> maybe maybe a DHD. I don't know what it is, but yeah. So the nice part about moving into different industries yeah. for me was, you know, that boredom. But also it's because what I learned, I think, in my career is when you get into a job, you make the role. Mm. You might be told what these are the duties, yes. but it's up to you to make the role. You see what I mean? So for example, because I used to like, am I not be able to do the IT, IT that I'm thinking, but I can do a presentation. Mm. I can, you know, do with, deal with graphics. Yes. I can, you know, say, oh, you know what? I'm actually thinking of having a little share, SharePoint. I don't, I don't know how it looks like. Mm. And then you speak to the IT staff, then they create a SharePoint for you for the department. So it was about how do I take this role with the passion that I have, with the knowledge I have, or what I think it is I studied that I want to see and shape it into the current job that I have. So that is that is what I, I think kind of like helped me mm. in terms of still not running away totally in what I studied or what my passion was, bringing in little bits of it into the different roles that I had. I like what you're saying. It echoes what a previous guest, um, oh. I think two episodes ago, was talking about. She says um, she's never had a job description. Mm. Right, and I don't think she meant that literally. Mm. But what she said is that, or what she meant, what I took from what she was saying is that there's no clear lines about this is what I do and this is what I do. Yeah, right. Especially if you're having a long term view of your career yeah, yeah. and your own personal development. Mm. Right? Mm. If you're gonna wanna be able to be a, a, a <coughs> fully rounded yeah. person, you're gonna have to explore, get out of your comfort, comfort zone, zone, and. And, and, and it's also highlighted if you see a lot of, um, even banks now, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Traditionally, 
for you to get a role in a bank, you mm-hmm. need to have studied finance. Exactly. But now we see a lot of engineers, we see people in agriculture, we yeah. see people in everything going into banking, which highlights the thing. You might have studied banking or you might have studied marketing, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that you are destined to be a marketer. To make it up. True. Right? Yes. Like, anyway. Like studied me. accounting. Not destined to be an accountant. <laughs> I will still. <laughs> you still, you still recognize that you don't know. Until you come to your full calling, sir. <laughs> yeah, like numbers. You know? <laughs> and numbers Comfort. like me. Comfort. Comfort. That's what I used to I'm yeah. falling into the trap. Into the trap. Okay. So, sh- so we're going to no, shake you a bit. Nah. <laughs> no, this podcast is already doing a great but job. Don't worry. Uh, in shaking you. Yeah. Shaking you, ne? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, tell me about um your your role just before we, we dive into the perfumery again. Mm-hmm. When you were at Microsoft, mm-hmm. what did you do? Mm-hmm. What was a typical month, day, day. week? Okay, whatever. so my role okay. at uh, okay, so my role at Microsoft was what we call a program manager. Okay, and what I did was I supported a team across Middle East, Africa, so Central oh, Europe, Middle East, Africa. Okay, so what you find with international companies like Microsoft or or SAP or whatever. You don't have, you've got one person mm. that supports different countries. Mm. So that's why the roles are always, or they always change in Tibonis with yeah. IT, because the roles get smaller and smaller. I see. You see? So as I said, my job really was more legal, government affairs kind of thing. Mm. So when it came to, I'm just going to say, say home affairs, as I was saying, we talk about up- updating software mm. in a sense that when you travel, if your passport, beep, the system should be able to show who Liseho is. Mm. That is what Microsoft sells as a software mm. company. Mm. But with that comes a lot of agreements. With that comes a lot of, you know, information, governance. sharing, corporate governance, yes. that sort of thing. So that's what I did. I see. So that's when I used to have the privilege of traveling. Yes. Which eventually gave me exposure to the perfumes. Which ah. eventually gave me exposure to this. <laughs> because it was through that. So you find that, as I said, I'm supporting a team in Dubai. Yeah. I'm supporting a team in Turkey. And you so get there, you smell when you get oud. there, you like, just hits you I'm in the telling face. you, and I'm like, <laughs> why, is that, why, why does everybody want to go to Dubai? Up to yeah. today, yeah. people want to go to Dubai. And immediately, not even from just um, the scent, yeah. you know, from when you see the ladies, very pretty, very everything. Yes. Emirates is a very nice airline. Yes. Dubai is an expensive city. Yes. There's something that calls you there. Mm. And immediately when you land in that airport, it's the, and, it don't, and it's unconscious, but yes. the smell is different. Yeah. You so spoke about, you spoke about the, the, the power of subconscious uh, scent. Yes. And you made a, v- a brilliant example. Talk about yeah. it. Yeah, so so what we when don't we made, realize, yeah. yeah, so what yeah. we don't realize is that scent, as I say, yes. actually influences even spend. Yeah. So you find that there are certain places where you go to. I'm gonna give you know, Santon City and yes. the Diamond Walk as an example. Yes. That's the one that I gave. Yes. And that is why when you get to the Diamond Walk, you're thinking, oh, it's Gucci, there it's. But the thing is, you don't understand that when you get there, the first thing that hits you that is different besides how it, how looks, it looks is the way it smells. Smell. And that smell is the one that it clicks something in your yeah. brain and you just don't know it. That's the power of scent. You don't mm-hmm. know it. Mm-hmm. As you walk in, you're like, oh, I'm the Seho man, Gucci. <laughs> Hi, man. 50,000 rand t shirt. <laughs> I can afford it. <laughs> and, and, and you can't, even as if the 50,000 is yes. relative. But there's something that pulls you to spend that kind of money. You know what I mean? Mm. And I say the same thing about food. Mm. There are some places where you where you pass by, it's not the smell of food first that you smell. Yeah. There's a funny little scent. Something. But it triggers your enzymes. Mm-hmm. And then you go there, you're like, oh, I just want something to eat. I want something to eat. Mm. That time and you weren't even thinking no, about it. No, you're not thinking food. about it. That's why I say yeah. it's so subconscious. Mm. That's why I say that scent changes atmosphere. Yeah. And one thing I always would love to say, especially to my brothers, to you males, yeah. Because us, us women, I think we get the opportunity to, um, shall I say, undress and redress. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we get into different roles every day. So say as a woman, in the morning, you're a mom, you're a wife, you put on a role, oh, change. Yeah. You said, I mean, men tend not to change like that. So what I always say is men always should have at least a car diffuser. Because when you live here or when you leave your place of work, stressed out, you don't really know it. If it, there's no outlet for that, mm. you carry that at home. Mm. But because, you know, men, as I said, they're not like us. You don't come home and then suddenly like, you can be like, yeah, it was a bad day at work. But that 
thing that happened at work is still lingering. Mm. And what you don't know is affecting even the home environment. environment. Because men are not like us women. You guys yeah. don't always talk. Your wife can come home and be like, I had a bad day. She removes her work clothes. Yeah. Immediately she puts in her home clothes. She's yeah. now in mom mode. You see yeah. what I mean? Yes, yes, so yes. she's removed that. So I always say men, if they can, always have a car diffuser. Yeah. Because what it does, it, it, in a sense, it sucks that energy. Mm. And it puts you in that mood of, okay, work is done. I'll deal with it tomorrow. Yeah. You just don't know it. It's a different environment. Exact environment. It influences yes, the environment. I see. So diffusers actually, they, they, in a sense, I say they swallow negative energy. Mm. If I even gave the example that even when you see it spiritually, right, whether it is churches or whether it's traditionally, before, if you see in the Catholic church, before the, is the priest, ne? they call him the priest, yeah, or not I the pastor. Know. Uh, I don't know. What the are father. They? Is it the not father. The father. <laughs> I think it's the father. The Pope. So, yes, the father. Yes, the, the father, father mm -hmm. yes. So, remember, as he comes in, there's mm. always somebody in front who's got that incense in there. That is change, changing of the atmosphere now. Yeah. If there's any negativity, it's repelling. Uh -huh. And you find it like usually, as I said, if you see the Orientals or Middle East, especially when you go to these spas, yes. it's incense that's already... Yes. Smelling. So there's a healing mm. aroma. Mm. And as I said even before, for people that believe in, you know, ancestral worship, mm. when you're going to, whether it's going to consult a sangoma, the first thing they do is they light in. In Be Be yes. Because spirit spirituality cannot just come. It has to be ushered in by a scent, mm. changing the atmosphere. The, the, okay. See what I'm saying? I see exactly. So that's saying. why I'm saying scent is that important. It's crucial. But we just don't know it. We just don't know it. And it, yeah, it's like you're saying, it's subconscious. May, subconscious, may more, yes. I see. That's what I say. Like I always say, like now, um, for me, if people are in a relationship, you and your wife, mm. and you guys want to get married, mm. I always say, you know what? Try and get somebody who can create a scent for you guys. Okay. And then what you do is you create your own scent. Because remember that time you love it, Davi. Mm. Because remember as well, scents are seasonal. Scents yeah. usher in seasons. Yeah. And how you know scents usher in seasons? When it's time for a great time, like say it's time for change, spring, mm. the first thing that we smell are the flowers. Yeah. The, the season has changed. Those, what do they call them? Mm. Blossoms. Yeah, exactly. Blossoms, yeah. Suddenly, yes. now you know this. You're right. September, everybody knows the spring. You're right. Suddenly the flowers are up, yeah. your mood is changed, mm. you're grumpy all winter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's Suddenly out. spring is out. Yes. And now we know transition from spring to summer, again is scent. Why? The summer rains. Fruits. Then the fruits. Yeah. Then this. When we're getting into winter, Already, the, the, the smell it's becomes dry. dark and it's dry. Mm. Then your mood is mm. dry. I know I've got a sister of mine, she's grumpy all winter. In fact, she even wears <laughs> black clothes. She's prepared. She's in winter. grumpy in winter. <laughs> she does not even want to leave the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, because, as I say, seasons are governed by scent. By scent. So, what I would say is, you know, you're lovey dovey, having a great time. Mm. You found the woman, you found the man. You know, whether you guys want to have a wedding or whatever, I would say, come, we talk, we curate a scent for you. Mm. Like, oh, love you, I love it, I love it. Because what we want to do is we want to take that love yeah. and we want to curate it into even take a candle, ah. into something. Because we know four years later, yeah. or oh, not even four years, this, not three even years four later, years. Do you need a reminder. Like, this is not the woman for me. She's like, ah, oh, this is not the guy for me, I'm done. And you know what? At mm. that time, yeah. whoever is much more um, mature, yeah. I would say, bring out that candle that you had at that day. Remind yourself of that day. Because scents also now, they yeah. catch up. They are very powerful. You know how most people have a favorite scent, not because it's the best scent, yeah. but because it has so many memories associated to it. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Exactly. And you know what they're doing now, even with older people that mm. are suffering from is it amnesia and is Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's you know, they yeah. Are, yeah. So they are even um using the power of scent to remind them. Oh. So as they get older, oh. so if it's the something that they knew, I'm just saying, say for example, they had a child that died, mm. right? Mm. And then they know that this smells like my child. Mm. It brings back the memory. It triggers something. Triggers something. So that's how powerful scent is and i've always said you know what scents change atmospheres death has got a scent yeah life has got a scent so when you how do you know that life has got a scent because when you hold a newborn baby they've got the smell there's a, there's not a, a baby part of yeah. the smell and everyone around you whether you like babies or not when it's like a three-month-old baby and everybody just wants to look and smile and the baby just brings that that joy that, that happiness yeah death also has got a scent. Oh. 
You see what I mean? Mm. Death has got a smell. And that's why you find out if there's a death in the family. Afterwards, literally everything goes wrong. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Literally everything goes wrong. Because the environment is, is that's set why up. We thin, yeah. That's why we do cleansing. Yeah. Or you do prayers. Or you do whatever. Because if you don't do it, you find that, okay, my father died. After my father died, I lost my job. After I lost my job, is this. Because death, death comes in and capture that scent. It comes in to take. Mm. What I always say for me is, you know, whether you've got it, say diffusers or just spray something. Something. And I can tell you, I had a break in in my house, I think last month. I don't know if I told you the story no, when I think. Some, yeah. So I was in Durban, I was doing a launch in Durban. I come back, I had a break in. The, so oh, I no. lived there in a, yeah, in a freestanding house as well. Yes. Broke into my bedroom, stole the TV and oh, everything. No. First night, I couldn't sleep there. Then I had to, you know, clean and everything. I'm panicky. Mm. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to allow this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I took out one of the diffusers. Cha -cha -cha. Cha -cha -cha. That night ah. captured back my the environment. environment was back. It was now. back. So I might not be able to do something about the stuff that was taken, but I will not allow that to influence the my atmosphere and my environment. That's Just beautiful. Yeah. I think this is a great place for us to get into. The Ventus Collection. Yes. Your luxury brand. Yes. <laughs> luxury collection. Yes. Luxury collection. Yes. The Ventus Collection. Yes. I almost said Aventus. And the ones that like uh, mm. fragrances will know who I am. Oh, yeah. I know it. I know yes. it. Yes. Tell us about Aventus. How did it start? Just take us uh, through the journey of starting your own brand in South Africa. Yeah, so as I said, how it started, well, I'm mm. a spiritual person, yes. so I believe, I believe it, as I said, in callings, mm -hmm. I believe it was my calling from God. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that I know about, I told them, very corporate, yes. <laughs> I'm very corporate, yeah. but one thing that I know about myself is I'm sus. Susceptible, that the right word, but I'm sensitive to smells, I'm sensitive to environments, mm -hmm. I'm just that sort of person. And uh, because I've got a business part of mine who knows, used to sell perfumes. Okay. And then that's how, because it's true. He was a reseller. Yes, he was a reseller. Okay, okay, okay. But he used to get his perfumes, more of the Arabic scents, so okay. they're quite different at the yeah. time. And then when I used to travel quite a bit, I thought, wow, you know what? This was a great idea because sometimes you get to the airport, you're not allowed to take your full bottle. I left so many. Yeah. Yeah, bottles. 100 million. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're not allowed to take million, it. Yes, yes, so then yes. I thought it would be a great idea because I'm travel to Dubai. So I saw that they had these that they were giving away, the small mm. ones. Mm. And you can carry these around. Yes. Then I thought like, oh, it would be a great idea to actually have hotels yes. having this. And then that's when we started to think about kind of scents, kind mm. of smells. Mm. Then we thought, okay, something unisex. Mm. So the idea when I started was just to produce this okay. in mass production. Okay. It's cheap. It's not going to cause me headaches. Yes. And I'm thinking anybody can like it. You go away for the weekend with your wife. Yeah. Come back with that's something cool. cute. Yeah. You know what I mean? We get to the hotels. The hotels are like, ah, uh -uh. if I take this from you, that means I have to increase my price. So I like the scent. But I like it this way. So okay. that's how then we got into the whole production. Oh, so now you needed to tailor make your own That's scent. the thing, our own scent. Oh, so you used to do a pre-established scent. You were just, what's the word? There's a word like that's something. decanting. Yeah, decanting. You were yes. decanting them into smaller. Into smaller, yes. Uh, and then they said, no, no, no. I, I like the concept. I just don't like this don't like specific this scent. Specific scent. You were like, so, ah. So we came up with our own scent, which is very, very great. As I said, we got don't, this. Don't skip past that <laughs> okay. part. That's a very important part. Coming out with yeah. your own scent based yeah. on what? And maybe uh, as you speak, break down the, those that know scents, knows, know that there's an opening, yeah. there's a middle, and then there's yes, a base. The underwood, yes. How do you choose? Well, I want my base to be this. and Is it just a preference thing or what? I, 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 yeah, I think for me it's a preference thing. Okay, okay. But okay. I think also it's a mood thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because as I said, my business partner is a male. Yeah. So the nice part was, okay, so say for example, we've got an oud undertone. Uh -huh. So he likes strong sense. Mm. He's a macho masculine. guy. Yeah, he's yeah. very masculine. Yeah. And then remember also, I'm from a corporate background. I'm like, it wouldn't be good to have a very strong scent in an it. office. Yeah. So how do we then have that? The balance. And then also, what does it mean? Because mm. He's like, no, if I'm a guy, I want that when I get in. They must they feel announce me. me before I come in. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I get that, okay. but then you don't want to be imposing. Yeah. 
So then we started to play with kind of scents. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, as I said, that's how that's how we came up with with the two, which which we tested out samples, and then you know people like you said, oh wow, it's nice, we like it. Yes. And then that's when we went back to the. What, what are the names of your two? So um, so our name is the Vintas Collection. That yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's brand. the brand. And the two, and um, then the, the so our slogan mm -hmm. is taken from Julius Caesar's court, which is Vini Vidi Vici. Yeah. Which means I came, I saw, I conquered. So our hey, the lawyers are shaking. Uh, I hate people. Like, <laughs> when they do a lesson, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know why we yes. do a lesson. In fact, <laughs> Vintas means the wind in Latin. I don't know why we do really? Latin. Yeah, yeah no, lawyers know. are very happy right now. Yeah, so we chose Briti. We chose we chose the Latin, uh -huh. Latin language. Mm. So our brand is the Vini Collection, which is the oh, I came collection. Okay. Yeah. So this is our entry level, yes. and then we're gonna have the Vidi, and then we're gonna have the Vici. Oh, and then yeah. they go up, in... and they go up. So. So that's why so we've got like we call them tripods. So they come in threes. Okay. Threes, threes. So that is what we are hoping I to see. do. So the Vini is what we've got now. Yes. And it is as I said, unisex. So we've got two scents. Mm -hmm. They're both unisex. Mm -hmm. One is just slightly sweeter, or we call it one that's slightly day. So it's mm -hmm. called the Vini Lux. Mm -hmm. Vini Lux means day, day ah, in Latin. Okay. And then Vini Nox. Nox means night. night. So ah. the sweeter-ish one is the day one, and then the slightly more oud one is it's for the night. night. But they all they kind of like intermix. Okay. So if you can put the day one, yeah. you can still put the night one. They're not. Yeah. Or you can layer them. You can layer, yes. Yeah, so they're not ah. worlds apart. So it also consider that. So how do you bring in two cents together that fuse together? Because mm. sometimes when you've got two cents and then they. Smell I, quite odd. Yeah. yeah now, now you can't even put the other one. No, you can't put the other one. So the idea actually was for either the traveler, as I said, get away weekend. Mm. You go there, you're running for a meeting or mm. there's, you know, team building. You get there, oh, I've got the day one. It's not too strong. Mm. I can be in office environment. Later on, I can put on my suit, to put be on louder, the day one. Yes. I want to be louder. But they, they are still able to inter, intercept each other I nicely. See. Yeah, I see. That's, that was the idea. Okay. So you are the corporate strategist yes. for the Ventures Collection. Yes. What does that involve? So I didn't want to say CEO founder. <laughs> I was looking to be funky. <laughs> I think that's what we're looking to be. We're looking to be... We wanted to be a good different. Know, yeah, yeah, unique. Yeah, unique. Okay. So, so my yeah. business partner, we call him the product architect. Product architect. architect. Okay, he's more the designer. Yeah, there. designer. We don't know what to call them. Instead of engineer. So we're looking for funky... <laughs> we're just looking for funky names. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Something that's more relatable to yeah. you. 18 to 35 yeah. year olds. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Something that is not so old school, like yeah, CEO. CEO yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking it's old school. Okay. I don't know. That's okay. just me. Mm. But but my um but really to be honest with you, my job is really to set the corporate structure of the company. I see. So my job is to go out and speak about the product to mm -hmm. corporates, and then my job is also to drive the product to the people, sales. understanding marketing it from sales. exactly marketing ah. sales. But also because we are not just a product, we're actually an industry, and what we also want to be pushing is manufacturing industry and manufacturing mm. is the next big employable yes. industry in fact i've been in touch with vets and one of the things that when i do i don't know if i told you mm -mm. is to be able to come up with a forum next year oh. bringing in young people and then oh. we want to talk about when you're talking about the future of employment yes. bringing in manufacturing as that ah. because in in what i've seen everything literally i've had to almost import the the bottles, the, bottle. I mean, the oils we import. Oh. So literally everything is imported. And where we're importing them is people that actually manufacture. I see. And just like IT, you know, when Bill Gates in the 70s, when he started this mm. whole computer industry, mm. one thing that I love to say, he said he sees a vision mm. where eventually every household will have a computer. Mm. So we didn't know how IT was going to be like in 2023. We didn't know, yeah. So now I'm looking at manufacturing. Mm -hmm. That's actually what I'm seeing. Yeah. Because it's an, it's an industry that is untapped. It's an and it's such an important industry. I'm telling you. Especially in terms of developing uh, economy. Economies. Right? Look at China. Because look, mm. before China, mm. China is, China now is where Japan was. So Japan started this thing mm. in, 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 in the Middle East or in, the, in, in Asia. Mm. They were the ones that were known for their cheap yes. products that were 
mass produced that weren't the best. But because they developed their manufacturing capability, they became a global superpower. Then China comes in and steps into that role. Now we have Taiwan, we have Hong Kong, we have Vietnam also occupying that thing. And right now we're being left behind. You see what I mean? That's like, please, please sign us up. We are there. That's yeah. Life. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, no. part of that forum. I can't wait we'll to have you guys. We'll be the media sponsor for that forum. <laughs> I can't wait to have you guys. So, so it's going to be interesting because mm. there's a lot of people that I've, um, I'm going to bring in. And yeah. actually, IT, again, mm. is going to play a very, very fundamental role. The great because equalizer. also, you know, yes, everything's going to be IT related. Yes. And, um, you know, when you're looking at people that are studying um, STEM, STEM, they call them STEM subjects. Yeah, yeah. So it's another thing Let's that I... Let's define it for people you. that might know. So science, science tech, 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 engineering, engineering maths. maths. Yes. yes. So when I push students or learners to actually study that, mm-hmm. but not just from an IT perspective, perspective. only, mm. but from a manufacturing perspective, mm. because eventually this is this is the industry that's going to create employment. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. that is what my job is. Okay. <laughs> you see what I mean? So to have conversations. Almost like business development, almost. Yes, business Isn't development. That? Yeah, because yeah, you're not just talking about your brand. Mm. You are you are fighting and standing for the entire industry. Yeah, as the a whole. industry. I mean, that's beautiful. And the industry actually is very quite small for, especially for a black female. I don't know yes. any chapters that support manufacturing. You know, I've tried to. Oh, geez, I've tried so many things. I tried to go into radio. I tried to join forums. There's really nothing that really speaks about manufacturing I or even see. women in manufacturing. Yeah. Let alone black women in manufacturing. Black, yeah. So it's actually something that I th- I think there is a market. There is a space, and and yeah, and that I think that's part of the exciting yeah. part of this journey. I think there's absolutely a space because remember the, like you said, Middle East. Is so dominant now because they took scents that are familiar <laughs> and native to them and are spreading them across the world. Exactly. Everyone from everywhere in the world has that those native scents that are native to us. Yeah. Right? Plant that grow here. Yeah. Roy Boss, uh, Fain Boss, all of those mm-hmm. things that are native to South Africa that people have never smelled before. Exactly. And if we can, and, and you, you, I think you are perfectly placed and to be the one to spread. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, Liseho, one mm. of the things, our mandate, yes. shall I say our passion, yes. is to possibly create a uniquely African scent. Absolutely. Which where anyone in the world yes. will tell you this smells like Africa. This is African. Because if you look at one of our products, one of the uh, underlining tools is actually sea sage. And sage okay. is what we have here. Yes. The smell of the sea is what we have here because you take yes. the sea salt. Yeah. And we match them together. Oh. And one of the conversations I would love to start is to say, what does an African scent mean to you? Mean to when me. you think Africa, what is the smell? Mm. So for me, it's like the smell of the summer rain. And everywhere in Africa ah. you go, you know that rain, just that smell yes. of just the rain falling on the ground. Mm. When you go to other countries, I haven't traveled a lot, mm. but some European countries, it rains, but that's, that no that sense. unique African smell not is not there. there, you know? Yeah. Or somebody said the smell of Amarula. You know, Amarula, we've got it in the cream de curl. Yes. Now you've got it in the chocolate. Yes. Other, but you have it as part of a smell. A sm- why not? You know what I mean? Yes. Some people tell you the smell of the African bush, you know, like mm. the like the burnt uh, grass. You yes. know, when you're out in the wild or yes. out in the... So that kind of smell. I see. So how do you take those smells mm-hmm. and then create them into a fragrance ah. that even if you're in Australia, it you smells wanna, like Africa. For the Australians that, are, that want to get a taste of get South Africa. Get a taste, exactly. what I mean. Exactly. That's because that's what the Asians have done. Yeah. You know? And the Arabs have got their, their very, very specific scent. Ooh, that must be, yes. That must be. Yes. It's, it's an undertone. It's there. And you Incense. know this one. Yes. You'll be like, this is an Arabic smell. Mm-hmm. The Orientals have got their smells. Mm-hmm. The French have got their smells. Yes. So I said the Europeans have got their smells. Italians, smell. you're right. They've got their own smell. Absolutely right. So even if they mix it, whatever, there's this undertone that you're like, no, this is an Arabic smell. Absolutely This is right. an Oriental yes. smell. So when you're talking about that, you know, some of the products, some of them they use, they're actually native to Africa. So how do oh, we take but because these? because they've, they've uh, what's the word? Repo- mm-hmm. Repossessed. The, or they, of, yes. Yeah, they've stolen them, sort of. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because they've, they've got the machinery. Yes. They've got, they've got the, manufacturing the production capability. plant. They've got the export I see. mechanism. Okay. But when you really look at it, half of the stuff that they use mm. is native to Africa. Mm. See, that's why I said sea sage. We've got sage here in Africa everywhere. Mm. We've got the sea. But the oil that we had to get is imported because mm, it's processed. So I if see. we could have a manufacturing plant, yes. we've got students or learners 
that are actually interested in that. Talk about that. Because I know in America, there's, <laughs> you can go to school to be a perfume maker. Yes. There's a yeah. qualification, a program that you go to a couple of years. You intern at a cosmetics company. Wow. There's, there's an entire industry in the US. Wow, and I'm, okay. I'm guessing in Europe as well. How does that look like in South Africa? Do we have that? Do we have the interest at least? Uh, I think the interest is coming now because okay. one of the things that we're really pushing for mm. is the social team building activities of perfume making. Yes. So, for example, you know, people have got the sip and paint, people yeah. have got wine tasting. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to merge that as a way of intro introducing the ah. art of perfumery. Okay. And that is where the interest is being gauged from. Yes. But I think it's we're still a little bit far because, you know, you have to, with, with perfumery to kind of understand because people think perfume is just luxury. Mm. As I said, you know, the nice part about it, once you start to get to know it, it's not just spraying the perfume. Mm. There's a story behind yes. it. But we've gauged that, you know, in terms of our corporate building activities, you know, that little bit of bringing in the sense, but I bring in sense, you get to do them and then you get a certificate, you get to take away something. Oh, that's nice. It's, it's a team building, it's fun mm. and people actually go, oh, actually, this is something that one can do. Yeah. So those are little steps that we're taking. In terms so Ventus is doing this. You come in with your team Yes. Uh, you, there's perfume oils there. You label them. Uh -huh. And then you choose the different... Well, you give them the fundamental, just yeah. the basic sort of lesson. And then they put in the oils and make their own scent. Exactly. That's so what nice. I do is... Uh, so when I do my launches, I've done three launches with Hershey's. Okay. So I did my first launch in uh, in July. Mm -hmm. And then it was a mixture. So it's a mixture of like someone brings in a gin and tonic. Mm. And then because it's a scent, it's a scent experience. Mm. And then I bring in a perfume making kit. Ah. So when I come here, call you guys... You have a few drinks. Yes. Okay. I give you two different scents, some alcohol. I explain it to you. And here's the funny part. Everybody gets the same scents. Mm. The funny part is that everybody smells the same thing. Wow. Not everybody smells the same thing. Even though you are given, given the, the, the same, same scent. Wow. You Not everybody smells the same thing. That's very because interesting. Because the nice part about scents is one, they always relate you to something you're comfortable with, mm. that you can relate to, mm. or something that you desire. Or something, it, it ignites something in you. And always the reaction is always what I love. So I'm like, mm, it smells like, it smells like vanilla. It, it's, you know. Even because if, you like vanilla. Exactly. <laughs> and vanilla has, there's something that's happened with vanilla. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe you like the taste of vanilla. Or vanilla reminds you of something. Something, yeah. But vanilla, but whatever it is, it's a good memory. Mm. Whatever it is, a good scent. Mm. So then it brightens up your mood. I see. You're just not aware of it. Ah. So team building. You and that boss that don't talk. Get along. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> have a scent making experience. <laughs> Break the eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so it helps because now you've got something to talk about. Yeah. Which yes, is yes. quite different. I see. Yeah. So eventually I'm hoping we'll be able to get there to fluence industries. That's beautiful. Yeah. What do you think it takes to be a successful perfumer in South Africa? And I know you said the industry is small, but when you now put yourself in 10 years from now, yeah. and you're looking back, what are the things that you did now that helped you become a successful perfumer? Mm -hmm. One of them I think we've already touched about, which is spreading the message behind perfuming, right? It's not just the same thing. Yes. But yes. Pra more practical, business, corporate yeah. sort of things. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the steps that you can take? So the first thing is, I think I've learned that let the product speak for itself. Okay. So as I said, when I started, this is what I thought. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I was told, I like the smell, but give it to me in a spray. Mm. I like the smell, room give sprayer. it to me in this. Uh, so they allowing the, pro the product has got a life of its own. I see. Your podcast has got a life of its own. Uh -huh. You see what I mean? Mm. But so you can't come and say, because I only want, I'm just saying for example, I only want to speak to accountants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might find like now when we've met, I might not... In your mind, you've been the right demographic, mm. but you're allowing your podcast, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's got a life of its own. Mm. It's the one that's pulling. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I had to learn. Mm. You see what I mean? Because I said I just didn't, I just want this. And then if someone says they want 5,000 and I can make a quick buck, I wasn't able to make a quick buck. I see. The way I thought I would. Yes. But then someone said, I like the actual product. Mm. Give it to me like this. In a different way. Like that's why I said now we're talking about candles. Yeah. Now we're talking about even what you do, die fuses that you stick on the wall. Yeah. Now I'm talking about car diffusers. Yes. When I started, I had no idea. You just thought. Of course, this is like, easy, yeah. easy, you know, because we want easy stuff that's uh -huh. going to make you quick money. Now it's candle making and now it's scent mm -hmm. making. Now mm -hmm. it's, so, so I've 
allowing the product to speak for itself. That's mm -hmm. the first thing that I see. Mm -hmm. And then also, as I said, getting reviews. Mm -hmm. Because the thing that's called me Feedback. and you yeah. together is the product. <laughs> you see? So that's that's what I would say. I, I, that has been my greatest lesson. Yeah. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Before we close the show, mm -hmm. Mama Africa. <laughs> I call him Mama Africa. <laughs> Why Tell me about Mama Africa. <laughs> Who's Mama Africa and what capacity is it? <laughs> what do you do here, Mama Africa? <laughs> we do our research in 99. <laughs> My gosh! <laughs> Tell me about Mama Africa. Your life is Mama Africa. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm worried now. Oh, I don't know how. What else do you know, know about me? Ah, yes, then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how can I put it? Yeah. Um, I think just a nickname that I just got uh -huh. from my corporate days, like, first yeah. of all, because as I said, I was very passionate about STEM so projects. Just, yeah. just passionate also, as I said, first of all, about just how do we get people out there? Yeah. You know what I mean? But also I said, because I'm a spiritual person mm. as well. So one of the things that I do is I just do like a business coaching, yes. but from a spiritual That's perspective. That's where I wanted you to get to. Yeah, yeah from a spiritual perspective. Because yeah. I said, I believe my calling to do this was spiritual. Mm. And I believe that there's a reason why um, you know, God calls you to do something specific. Mm. And I can tell you as it is for free mm. now, um, when we started this business, it was in April, and then Beyonce I told you released her own perfume last month. Okay. So I know that I'm in the right space. Uh -huh. So there's something that's happening with fragrances. I see. There's there's something in the market. There's something there's some in activity. the market about it. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But you have to understand, just apart from the physical, mm. life is very much spiritual. Mm. So I just do like your business coaching, business mentorship, mm -hmm. usually, or marriage mentorship, mm. callings, but based more on a spiritual perspective. I see. Yeah, so that's just something I do. But most of my clients for that are... Uh, People that I know in certain circles, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual circles or mm -hmm. certain ministries, mm -hmm. usually people not even in South Africa. So there's very few people in South Africa because it's a journey that okay. we partake. So we start maybe now up until we know that, okay, this is what this is where God is taking you. Yeah. This is what you're called to do. Mm -hmm. This is the reasons why you have to do it. And most of the time, it's, as I said, it's a journey. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's a pull. You don't know. You don't see it. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got the nickname. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, no, I very worried. worried. No, I, I was trying to push you to go into the coaching, and I'm glad you did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so as we close the show, ne, mm -hmm. we ask our guests the same three questions. Every guest gets mm -hmm. these, these questions just to sort of compare the answers. Just to, It's fun to sort of see uh -huh. the, the contrast and the, and the similarities. The first question, mm -hmm. think back to your career, more than 20 years of corporate, including Ventus. Must you say 20 years? <laughs> Seasoned was the right word. Like, what is that? No, we're just trying to see that uh, we're trying to show the audience that there's a lot. There. There's a lot. There's a lot that could, they could learn from. Out of the 20 years, what was your biggest win? Something that you consider your biggest victory, something that you're most proud of? Mm -hmm. mm. I, I think for me, my biggest win was from the 19 year old that started IT, not mm. knowing that I ever get into IT, mm. to actually being um, twice to the executive at Microsoft. Wow. But not just that, being able to push the boundaries of taking IT technology to children that don't have that capacity mm. in an environment that is not suited for that. Mm. So I, I believe that was my biggest, that's my biggest beautiful. win. Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful because that's where it's, it's needed, right? Yeah. As the, as the world is moving, is advancing, yeah. the best way for us to catch up is, is IT or tech, exactly. right? Because it makes it. It makes it so that I'm able to be in in in, in or to be in the know exactly. of what's happening everywhere around the world yeah, because yeah, of the yeah. internet and tech. I like that. Yeah. Number two is the opposite of that. Now, mm -hmm. what was your biggest loss, mm -hmm. disappointment, something that didn't go right? Mm -hmm. And from that, what was the biggest lesson? Um, I think the biggest loss for me was being married to the corporate industry. Yeah. So when I lost that. I was shattered. I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I turned a job into a marriage. You attached your identity I, to this job. This, yes. So without this, what do I do? Eish. So when that gets, I, I struggled. I think I still struggle sometimes mm. because there are days where I don't even want to wake up. Mm. There are days I'm like, because that is what I was good at. Mm. That is what I was trained to do. Mm -hmm. So when that is taken away, what do I do? You so were it's forced harder. out of your comfort zone. Yes, I was forced out of my comfort zone. Mm. And I hated it. Mm. I, 
absolutely loathed it. Mm. So I think the biggest loss was being married, my yes. identity being tied to, yes. to the corporate identity without even thinking that I can be something else. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And then also I think on that, is is which I think is a is an issue, especially with us in Africa, learning to know what your calling is late. You know, I call it late because everything is timed. Yes. So if I look at if look, if I done this business, everywhere I'm going, like, what if it comes five years ago? <laughs> if it comes like, you know, we would have done this. Yes. You know, it's a great concept, but mm. let me see how I can help. I love it, but if it done, if it come ten years ago, yeah. So, so there is that for me. But ten years ago, I was married. You were in job. corporate. I'm married to this thing. I it had to work. I see. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I think that for me, as I said, I still struggle with it. Yes. Because that's all I knew. Mm. So there, some days are good, some days and they're not so great. Mm. So I think that for me has been the biggest, yeah. biggest loss. I think yeah. the lesson is even more important then than the loss itself to say. Don't tie yourself to what you do. Yeah. What you do must be what you do. Exactly. So that if what you do changes, nothing else fundamental it's nothing within you changes. Yeah. And also get to know what you're supposed to do from the that onset. That calling thing that you're talking no, about. No, I'm telling right? you. Because honestly, I believe that if you know what you're supposed to know. Yeah. And I've likened this to when you look at the way kings are born, especially, yeah. you know, I love these period movies. But when you see like King Charles, mm. from a young age, he was destined to be king. He was king. going to be king. He knows I'm going to be king. Yes. So everything around him is taught, you're going to talk like a king, uh, you're going to come with the best schools like a king. Uh, he knows it. Wow. So as in Africa, you try, you fall, you try. By the time you're studying, you're 40, you're this, now you have to learn a computer. It's yeah. tough, though, no. to have the, the, the self-awareness to be able to know what you're calling is at an early age. I spoke about this in that very first episode to say you are 18 mm. and you are told, not even 18, you are 16 in grade 10 mm. and you are told, pick the thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life. Mm. That's a tough thing yeah. to, to ask of someone that young that hasn't developed that level of self-awareness. How does one find it? Mm. How does one develop that self-awareness to be able to say, let me go find what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Mm. So, first of all, for me, it's information. 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 That's so, what Nine to Life is here for, yeah, by the way. Yeah. yeah, information, which is yes. great. Platforms like this. Because, uh -huh. you see, when you don't have access to information, you don't know what's there. Absolutely. Right? And then secondly, sometimes you really have to go and look for what it is that you're good at. Mm. What do I really like to do? Mm. There's some people I'm going to say, say, for example, your son, mm. you can see he just likes to be around. Yes. Energy. <laughs> you are just thinking he's just a kid. Yeah. But put him behind the camera. Mm. You know, once in a while. No, I want to put him in front of the in front camera. In front of the camera. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want so to put him. He must sit here and, and you know ask what the I mean? questions. Yeah. Exactly. When I'm on leave, he'll take over. That's what I'm saying. Yes. So we need more parents that are much more open-minded. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I said, for example, I wanted to be a DJ. My mother was like, mm -mm. you see what I mean? Mm. Who knows? I could be DJs in here today. <laughs> <laughs> I could be feeding the text. <laughs> Living the life, <laughs> traveling the world. Me. Who knows? <laughs> but 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 you know what I mean? So I just that exactly openness, you, you know yes, what I mean? So what yeah. is it that this child is good at? Mm. And I think also for me, you know, you surround your your child or children with the right kind of sort of mentors or people that see things that they don't. I was hoping we'd get into mentorship, but yeah. if time is against us, maybe you'll come back another yeah, time sure. and then we can. No, no Once you develop the Vine, a Vine Vidi. Vine Vidi, Vidi. Once you develop the Vidi line, you come back no, and then no. now we want to talk about mentorship. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be there. Hopefully by then we'd have done the vets and you would have come. No, not hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, not hopefully. Hopefully. We will. Yeah, Do words it. are important. The yeah. episode, I think it's episode 9 or 10. Mm -hmm. We had a, a, a lady here, Tseho Khailai, okay. who had entered the Mrs. South Africa. Really? Yeah, she entered. Yeah. And in the podcast we said, what would you do if you win? And then we corrected ourselves very quickly to say, no, no, no. When you win. Exactly. And she won. She, she won, won yeah. Africa, yeah. And one of the ladies, actually, that I was I'm going to be doing this, is she was also a Mrs. South Africa finalist. Really? So, in fact, maybe you need is to look me up. Her, Seho? I may be Seho. Because she was a Mrs. Mrs. South Africa because finalist. Because she also works with um, Hershey's. Yes. yes could it be. be. It yeah. could be. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, words are important. Yes. When you come back and you have done the video. all the things that you have planned out, yeah. not hope, ne? Plan. Yes. Yes. All the things that you've planned to do yeah. and they are done. Yeah. Then you come back. Again. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll be here. Last question. Yes. If you went, and this is this is a difficult one to ask people that have done a lot of things, but just try and mm -hmm. take yourself out of Belinda. If you weren't doing all the things that you've done in your past, what would you be doing? I'd be married 
raising a family. You'd be a house how? A housewife? Yeah, I think I'd be a house executive. Okay. I think I've known as I grow older that family <laughs> is so important. Yes. And it's something that I never thought that I would be. Mm. So I, I, I've You take it for granted because you had six siblings, you see? Yeah, I'm telling you. And then and then now, as I said, as I as you grow older and you start to see the 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 foundation of family is mm. so important mm. for what's happening in our society. Mm. And if I see so many things that are going wrong in our society, the side chick pandemic. <laughs> Such a pandemic <laughs> is because of fucking families and uncles taking advantage of children. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I think I would be a housewife. I've You'd never be been one. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. You've I've, always been. I've never been a housewife. Active. I've never been a home exec. Yeah. So maybe I'd be like that, that home exec, ne? raising kids, having a husband. That's beautiful. No, that's great. Uh, you know what I We've mean? had someone on the show say that as well, and they they all, all they almost said it the same way to say. The importance of, of of family is not is not understood wide, yeah. as widely as it, as it should be. Right? True, and True. and we take it for granted, yeah. but it's such an important role. Yeah. So, because when I look back and see, you know, the societies that we grew up in, when people got married, yes. you didn't have anything, but the the whole community will make sure ah, that the marriage happens. Yeah. Or when you, you know go to go study abroad, there's yes. nothing but. The family and the church, everybody comes. The people around you, you the know? relationship. And the relationship. Ah. So it was that that thing yeah. that I see is lacking now. And it's I and as I said, I've never done it. I've never known how it's like to wake up and not have to worry about <laughs> numbers and meetings. So maybe something new. <laughs> Raise a family, have a husband, run yeah. at home. You can try it for a couple of yeah. for a couple of weeks yeah, and see, 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 see how, how it goes. goes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for, for gracing us and, and trusting us with your story. Awesome. You know, like we said before, this is the podcast you do when you don't want to do podcasts. Uh, and we appreciate you coming. Um, where can people get your fragrance? And I also want to uh, give away some, some, some perfumes to some of our subscribers. But other than that, how, you, how, do, how do people get a hold of you? How do they want uh, participate in this team building of yours? Uh, how do they buy the fragrances? And how do they contact Mama Asoka? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they can just uh, hook, hook, hook me up yes. on Instagram, the Vintas Collection, T H E V E N T U S Collection, mm -hmm. or send me an email, Belinda at the Vintas Collection. We'll put your details on the description. You guys will find all those details. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. You're wow. very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> guys, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, leave a comment, share this to anyone you think might be interested in um, fragrances. Do you have any closing words before we close the show officially? I must get the perfumes. Get the perfumes, flicks. guys. <laughs> That's what I can say. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Killing the game. Oh, that? that was great. Is it? That was fantastic. Are you sure? Are you just flattering me? No, why would I do that? Okay. That's great. Let me also...